Are you finished cleaning up in the back? No, I don't have any plans. Is that today's paper? Yeah, why? Can I see the one ads? What for? Are you looking for a job? Maybe. Well, you got one. Is that what you call this? Well? Well? Well what? Are you gonna let me look at the want ads? Yeah, just as soon as I finish reading about the city fixing all these potholes on Singleton Boulevard. Ain't no city gonna fix no potholes on Singleton Boulevard. Well, I guess I could find out more about it if I wasn't getting interrupted all the time. And you know why the city ain't gonna fix no bottles? No. But I got a feeling that you gonna tell me. Because ain't nobody living on Singleton Boulevard but blacks, Mexicans, and poor whites. See what he's getting on. Hey, Ray. Yes, ma'am. How much are your melons? Two dollars a piece. Are they sweet? Sweetest melons you ever ate. Well, I'll take two of them. Where you want me to put them? Just put them in that storage room out back. And be sure you close my door. Mindful, yeah. I suspect he's harmless enough. You know, my daddy used to always say, some folks would rather climb a tree and tell a lie than to stand on the ground and tell the truth. What's that got to do with watermelons? Hot day, ain't it? Yes, ma'am, it sure is. Well, 
Go ahead on, Slack. What was you saying about watermelon? Well, it ain't got nothing to do with watermelon. But it's got something to do with a certain watermelon pepper. She spit out whatever it is you're trying to say. You making me dizzy just trying to understand you. My Lord. Climbing trees, telling lies. My, my, my. Did you close my door? I sure did. That'd be $4. Well, I'll finish up with you as soon as I... Get through this article here. Take your time. Slack is reading about the city fixing all the potholes on Singleton Boulevard. The man didn't come here for small talk, brother, man. Them folks in City Hall may be roosting, but I don't hear their cockatoo do. I don't think they care if them potholes get fixed or not. I said the same thing. Singleton Boulevard has always reminded me of a jagged edge night. What you mean? Don't get us started. Singleton Boulevard, it's a black asphalt road. It rips and tears at the heart of our neighborhood like a jagged edge knife. It ain't nothing but unpainted houses with vacant lots and overgrown weeds and little children. They just wading in the dirty brown water that fills this potholes. Yes, sir. Good Lord only knows how many people's life have been destroyed on Singleton Boulevard. ain't sweet, I'm gonna want a refund. That ain't no problem. Slag, why do you have to be so mean? Just my nature. Soon be talking to a rose snake. My, my, my. <sighs> yeah, I hope that tasted good. Brother May, only thing that's better than a sip of this hooch, sex. If God made anything better, he kept it for himself. Yeah, I'll drink to that. <laughs> Speaking of God, did you hear my brother go forth the pastor of the full gospel church? What happened to him? He got voted out of his church and his wife left him. Well, she was like most preachers' wives. All she wanted to do is sit on the front pew and show a little cleavage. Slag. Uh, let's go for it. Who is he, some backwoods preacher whose daddy was a hog farmer? Slag, Morgan, you ought not talk that way. Brother, go for it. He is a good man. And how do you know? Because my sister needed her kids, they go to his church. They think the world of him. Well, he must not be that good. He lost his church, his wife ran off. Something's wrong. It don't do no good to talk to you.
Day. Well, it usually is in the summertime in Texas. You mean to bother you? Oh, you're not bothering me. I'm just sitting here reading about the city, fixing some of these potholes on some of them. Oh, honey, come here. You know, I drive by this place almost every day. I always wonder what it looked like on the inside. Oh, now you know. A lot of stories about what goes on here. Okay, is that a fact? Yep. So yeah, I didn't get your name. Go for it. Go for it. You were a pastor down here at the Full Gospel Church. I was. Not anymore. Hmm. Heard. Bad news travels fast. Or I guess depending on your perspective, good news travels even faster. You know what I call this stuff? What's that? Cat whiskey. You know what? Because as soon as you take the first drink, It'll make you sit up and purr like a cat. <laughs> you know, I always told people that anybody who walked in here was going straight to hell. Now look at me, leaning up against the bar with a glass of, what'd you call it? Cat whiskey. With a glass of cat whiskey in front of me. You know, I've, I've swallowed creek water while baptizing folks. Choked down on my own self-respect. And once when I was preaching, I bit my tongue and almost swallowed it. But I've never swallowed cat whiskey. Well, it's the first time for everything. I, uh... I heard your wife left you. My wife left me, took our boy with her. I ain't heard from him in 15 years. The last time I saw Ruby, she was pulling out onto the interstate. She was wearing dark sunglasses and a mink coat. Where were you going? Chicago. Dallas to Chicago. That's a long drive by yourself. No, she wasn't alone. She was with a man. Said he was a record producer. And his record producer, was he the one that bought her the mink coat? Yeah. But I always said, someday I'd buy her a mink coat. You see them boxing gloves hanging over here? Yeah. I was ranked number five in the middleweight division. You know what the secret to my success was? What was that? Balance. Balance. Balance, yeah. 
Well, what do you mean? Well, I'll show you. And you see this right foot here? You see? I can move it forward to the side. I can move it backwards. I can always throw a punch from there. That's my anchor. If you know how to stand, you can always keep your balance. I'll try to remember that. Murder me, meet Rep. Go for it. What are you doing here? I came in to get out of the heat. Reverend Goforth, this is Brother May. Everybody around here calls her too sweet. Too sweet. I like that. It's more of a stage name. <laughs> uh, my sister Anita and her kids, they go to your church. Oh, uh, Sister Anita, yeah, she's a good woman. You know, she never mentioned having a sister, though. She didn't? She never requested a crack of me or nothing? Not that I can remember. <laughs> well, I got some business in the back. I got some deliveries coming. Murder May. I mean, too sweet. Would you keep the Reverend here in company? Till I get back. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rev, if you really want to know what goes on in here, you come back tonight. have to overlook Slack. <laughs> he was hit one too many times in the head when he's boxing. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about what happened at your church, Denise. The deacon board decided my situation is unacceptable. I'm no longer the shepherd of my flock. I know. Anita and her kids, they really like you. I'm sorry to hear about your wife. My wife, my wife had her faults, but we all do. Her faults? Brother, go for it. We ain't talking about saying excuse me when she burps. She left you. You don't understand. <laughs> no, Reverend, I guess I don't. Ruby was one of a kind. She was Saturday night on Sunday morning. She was... Amazing Grace and Off Flyway all rolled into one. You know, when Ruby sang, the troubled waters in people's lives became still. She was the lovely golden voice canary to my plain old black crow. I know it's scripture. Let the Bible say that a lamb will lay down with a lamb. But I don't believe the Bible say anything about a canary having to hang out with the crow. I appreciate your concern. If you ask me, being a preacher's wife, that's a high price to pay. What do you mean? Maybe your wife felt stranded between the juke joints of Saturday night and the tent revivals of Sunday morning. Perhaps. Preacher, you might think you got nothing left to laugh or shout about. Your wife leaving you, losing your church. But what you got to do, you got to shout. You can't afford to sit silent and still. You got to shout. Miss Verda May, I could have used you in the amen corner. I've been there too. That's if Anita would have told me about it. <laughs> Brother, go forth. When happiness come calling, it's usually for a short visit. But when it gets here, we have to let it know it's appreciated before it has to go on down the road. <laughs> Now I know why they call you too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> will you be here tonight? I sure will.
goes out the door I've been down this road before Somewhere there is someone who really cares for me any hotter, the hands are going to start laying hard boiled eggs. Don't the heat bother you? Nope. Do you want to be a red? I sure would appreciate it. Proof. So when did you start selling watermelon, Red? Since you cut back on your last order of cat whiskey? <laughs> well, in that case, you can double up on the next order. You know what they say, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. What about our deal? You supply me with this cat whiskey. I can make more money selling watermelons than I can selling you a few jars of cat whiskey. Let me ask you something, Red. Are you gonna be a peddler all your life? Sneaking around, selling cat whiskey in cardboard boxes, selling watermelons on the side of the road? That's all I know. Well, don't you want to know more? Knowing more can get you in trouble. The times are changing. Times ain't changing. Slack, you are two sandwiches short of a picnic. I can eat a hamburger at a lunch counter, but you can't. Yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, but it won't be that way always. You don't talk much about your days as a boxer. My career ended when a promoter wanted me to throw a fight. You mean take a dive? Yeah, this promoter was pushing this boxer from Mexico City. Wanted me to go down in the sixth round. You didn't do it, did you? Well, Boy was sick. My wife and I needed the money. 
you're getting way behind in the doctor bills. That's when I started drinking and quit training. My wife left me and took the boy with her. I can't believe it. I'd have bet a carton of Camel cigarettes you wouldn't take a dive. Wait a minute. Why are you telling me all this? You know, Red, my daddy used to say that if a man ain't found something worth dying for, he's fit to live. Fit to live? It's like the cheese has done slid off your cracker. Right now, I can buy a picture postcard of a black man lynched in Dallas. They not openly lynched him, they set him on fire. Yeah, man, I heard about that postcard. I could stand in the middle of downtown Dallas and chunk a rock and hit a tar paper shack but it got no running water. And Singleton Boulevard? It ain't nothing but potholes. <laughs> yeah, I know. How many times have you heard of somebody slipping off the banks of the Trinity River and never being seen again? Or those so-called suicides? People shot in the back? The back of their heads bashed in? Talk about times are changing? It seem like they're changing that much to me. Well, I'm gonna need that whiskey in here by the night. Sure, no problem. that back room cleaned up. Got some domino players coming. Back room domino players, my, my, my.
expecting a crowd. All right, don't get busy till later. I forgot to tell you earlier. First drink is always on the house, but after that. Where's Miss Birdie May? Oh, she's in the back. You know, I've been thinking about what you told me. What about? About how if I knew how to stand, I could keep my balance. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You ever knock anybody out? You need three things to knock somebody out. You need luck, power, and skill. I wanted to knock out that man and run off of Ruby. Well, would you think that would have done you any good? Probably not. Yeah, well, I wanted to knock my wife out when she left for the old boy. Did you? Never laid a glove on. All the damage I did, I did it to myself. No, Ruby and I had plans. She was gonna make a gospel album. Why did you fit in all this? Business manager, I guess. Yes. You don't know. I don't know if I ever fit in the Ruby's plans. So when this record producer came along, uh, it was an opportunity for her. She jumped at the chance. It sure was. And I had to face the Deacon's board. Mm. I guess being a preacher is kind of like living in a fishbowl land. Sure is. I just think it's about time you change your water. What do you mean by that? Have you ever heard of the Dallas Citizens Council? No, sure haven't. Well, the Dallas Citizens Council is a power in this town made up of a bunch of rich businessmen. And they usually like to go about their business quietly, but lately there's been a few problems. Well, what kind of problems? Well, one of the members, the man who owns the biggest newspaper in this town, was invited to the White House. And while he was there, he told President Kennedy that he ought to get off his little girl's tricycle and start leading the country. I can't believe the man didn't have any more respect for the president than that. You know, there are some folks in this town that think the Pope is running this country just because the president is Catholic. <laughs> I heard a man say the other day, that he thought that if black kids went to school with white kids, God will be angry and the world will be doomed. Oh, no, that's not true. God loves us all the same. You know, when Brother Bay first told me about you, I was wondering uh, why we had never met. I guess Ruby and I stayed on our own end of Singleton Boulevard. <laughs> well, your end of Singleton Boulevard is no different from mine. We're all in the same boat, bailing water and trying to stay afloat. What? Oh, hello, Brother Goforth. You been here long? Not long. Bertha May, what do you want now? Red's in the back and he wants to see you. I guess you can entertain the VF here for a while. Oh yeah, I sure will. You want something to drink? Uh, no thanks, I'm not thirsty. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe you got a taste of something else. Uh, Maybe. 
Whatever it is, I bet you I can serve you. Oh, I bet you can. Uh, my sister Anita told me your first name is Rufus. That's right. Rufus go for it. Oh, mm -hmm. I like the sound of that. Ooh, such a good little thing. Mm -hmm. mm. Should be all of it. Well, what do you think? You've done better. I knew it! I've been nervous as a whore in church. Oh, uh, Red, be grab and go for one. Hello. Slack, if you hadn't wanted this cat whiskey this evening, I could have got this right. When you try to rush this stuff, it's like trying to scratch your ear with your elbow. I thought he's a little He's a peddler for me. He'll sell anything for money. <laughs> well, bootlegging ain't making me no money. Speaking of money, those two melons you sold me, they ain't sweet. Passing your church. Not long enough. Mm -mm. Have you always sold cat whiskey? It's a family recipe. My daddy did it, and his daddy before him. And you drove by here every day for all that time and never once come inside. Huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a Wonder about the people that lived on Singleton Boulevard, what the inside of their houses look like. I guess I never thought about it. Yeah, they're just people, people that struggle, living hand to mouth. People that want opportunities but are denied. Married? You got any children? Fifteen-year-old girl. <laughs> oh, Lord. Girls can be a handful at that age. Tell me about it. She is always on me about fixing up the house. Well, girls can be sensitive about that sort of thing. You know, especially having friends over. But it ain't nothing but an old rent house. That don't make no difference. Where's this story in the Bible? about this man that got tangled up with these thieves. They uh, robbed him, beat him, left him for dead. You mean the Good Samaritan? Yeah, that's it, the Good Samaritan. Now all the religious folks <laughs> saw what happened to the man. They crossed over to the other side of the road and kept on going. I one of them stopped to help him. Except that one person. You know who that was? That was the Good Samaritan. And the reason that he did it is he wasn't afraid to reach down and touch the man's pain. 
You know, when I grew up, you could look through the holes in the floor and see the coon dog sleeping under the house. I got through it all right. Just because that's the way you was, it don't mean that's the way you should be now. And just because that's the way you used to be, it don't mean you should stay that way. Do you know how to paint and cut a board straight? For sure. Then you ought to try fixing up your place. You can get a lot done once you make up your mind. Now, there are a lot of voices in this town. Some of them loud. I heard a man say last week that if you believe in integration, you're a communist. Oh, well, that's crazy. Well, it ain't no crazy thing. You saying that if you come into my place, you're going to hell. Hmm. You know, real times are changing. We could use somebody like you. What could I do? Well, you could be a spokesman. Draw some attention to Sinkleton Boulevard. No, I, I, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> oh, sure you can. You used to standing up in front of crowds and talking. That was in church. So I was behind four walls where it was safe. Now look, I got a room back there you can use as an office. And you could sign people up, help them to get jobs. You could be a spokesman for the community. We could have a voice. Okay. You, you, you got the wrong man. I, well, at the church, people didn't come to hear me preach. They came to hear Ruby sing. I don't, I don't even think they even liked my preaching. It was all Ruby. Well, you know, Rev, sometimes life's greatest successes can start out as being life's greatest tragedies. But if you know how to stand, you can always keep your balance. <laughs> Lives matter. I've been thinking about getting out of the bootlegging business. Doing something else. What would you do? Pest control. Spraying cockroaches. There's lots of cockroaches on Singleton Boulevard. <laughs> Big ones, too. <laughs> I could trap rats. We got them, too. I could get me some business cards with my name on them and everything. You ought to do it. Bootlegging is risky, and you got your wife and your daughter to think about. You know, talking is good. People should do it more often. I guess. You know, get to know one another. It just shows that God made us all the same. Sometimes, I think we all made nothing but angels that have forgotten how to fly. I'm going to do it. I'm getting out of the bootlegging. There's more cockroaches on Singleton Boulevard than there is people drinking cat whiskey. What did I tell you about angels? You just got to learn how to open up your wings and fly. <laughs> Slack, I'm going. Oh, and I'm getting out of the bootlegging business too. What about I do? You'll just have to get somebody else. I'm going to be too busy spraying cockroaches. <laughs> but what about all this whiskey here? Like you said, I could have done better. Keep it. He's a nice man. Mm. Mm. Word of me, my daddy always told me to never run with a toothpick in your mouth. What's that got to do with anything? It ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Just never run with a toothpick in your mouth. I want you to put this whiskey in the back room. I'll try to sell it tonight. I thought you said it was bad. I didn't say it was bad. 
I said he could have done better. This is some good stuff. Ugh, I just assume me talking to a roll snake. I don't know. I want to see what this back room looks like. Here's your newspaper. Just put it on the table over there. What are you doing? Draining this liquor. What? Well, this new bootlegger I got leaves a lot of trash in this stuff. So I have to strain it. What I wouldn't do to have a batch of ribs, good old cat whiskey. Where did you get the nylon? In the back. It wasn't draped across the back of a chair, was it? Mm-hmm. That's my nylon. You get all upset about it. I always put it back on the chair so it can dry out when I'm finished with it. And I've been wearing that. What are you doing now? now this is vanilla extract. I mix a little bit of it in with this whiskey. Then I can sell it as French cognac. I heard all about him. All bad. He got a boy working for him. His name is Raymond. Yeah, but he don't like to be called Raymond. 
Why is that? He likes to be called Colo because he says oil and gas don't mix, but coal oil will always burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> so uh how are you and the rib getting along? Uh, oh, oh. <clears throat> Sinfully well. Mm -hmm. Did he tell you that his wife called? Ruby, what she want? Bus fare. To where? To Dallas. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I guess the record producer got tired of her. Did Rufus tell you anything else? Seems like you said something about your sister. Anita, what about her? Seems like your Rev and your sister was leaning a little bit toward one another. What? She was wanting more than a blessing, if you know what I mean. What? You might say the rail was a cool pit pimp. <laughs> no wonder Nita never requested prayer for me or nothing. Did Rufus tell you anything else? Well, he said he was getting ready to lead a protest march. For what? Well, for people to have the right to sit down at a lunch counter like anybody else. You created a monster. All I did was provide an opportunity for the man. Say, uh, ain't you supposed to be getting ready? I'm not going. Why not? I got a feeling. It's just... Just what? When people start talking about how we could do better. It's like man and father is gonna have to. The more they talk, the more hate builds up. Sometimes I think when God made me, that's when the troubles of the Lord all started. Well, Brother May, you can't have a crop without flying at the ground. It's just they, it's just that they twist things around, make us into something to look down on. The good Lord, He only knows. I try to have courage. I try to remember that God is God, but. Ready? We got to get a good spot so we can see it. She says she ain't going. Well, why not? So it's just a better feeling? What kind of feeling? <laughs> like something bad is gonna happen. Oh, God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For a man that's been kicked out of his church, the scripture sure comes easy for you. <laughs> I wasn't kicked out, I was voted out. Besides, I feel like I have more to say now than I ever did, but no congregation to say it to. Well, I understand. You're in the wilderness, wandering. I suppose. Look at this. What is that? Imagine this costs a lot of money, and it ain't got one thing good to say about President Kennedy. You know, I heard handbills are circulating around town about the president. I haven't seen one, but I heard it says, wanted for treason. Well, like my daddy always said, a hit dog will holler. <laughs> Times are changing. Times ain't changing. People still preaching hate. We can't let that stop us. And you wanting to protest and march for what? Our rights. You mean the right to sit down and eat a hamburger at a lunchroom kind? To start with, 
Do you think God care if we sit down and eat a hamburger at a lunch room counter? Look, just because God is preparing us for the next life doesn't mean he's uninvolved in the sufferings of this life. Just words. Look, life's right. Times are changing. And I'll be the first to admit they're not changing fast enough. But because of President Kennedy's visit, the Dallas Citizens Council is doing everything it can to make sure Dallas don't look like the rest of the South. Like I said, just words. And you two better get started if you're gonna catch that parade. Anyway, I got Red coming over to do some spraying for me. Uh, how is his uh, pest control business doing? Not too good, I heard. Yeah, we gotta go so we can get us a good spot so we can see the president when he drives by. I gotta get my purse. Well, it's about time. I got held up coming through downtown Dallas. The streets is blocked off. Yeah, they're having that parade for President Kennedy. I heard something about that. Is that your rig? <laughs> Ain't that something? Got your own business card with the name on it and everything. There is pest control. That's all right. Keep it. This thing sure is heavy. Spraying cockroaches is a lot harder than most people think it is. I done killed me a mess of cockroaches this morning. Do you want a beer, Red? I sure would appreciate it. Oh yeah, they got me another bootlegger. Oh, who? Dank Teal. You know him, don't you? I know him. I can't say as I like him much. How's his hooch? Well, it ain't the same as yours. What do you mean? Well, you know how I always enjoyed talking about your cat whiskey? How to make it sit up and purr like a cat. What's the matter? Dank Teal ain't got no name for his whiskey? No, did he don't. <laughs> you know, Ed, I was thinking that uh, if he wanted to make a little extra money, I'd take a few drugs in your cat whiskey. I'm awful busy. I'll have to think on it. Don't wait too long. You ain't the only one that's busy, you know. Well, since you're in a bind, I'll do it. Well, I'm gonna need it in here by tonight. And Red. I want you to make damn sure you put some spray dope in that sprayer, not just water. I need you to kill them damn roaches, not give them a bath. Sure, Slack.
Make some hearts on the neon moon Giddy up, giddy up, rodeo, Romeo We interrupt this broadcast for our special report from Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy has been shot by an assassin's bullet in downtown Dallas. The president was rushed to Parkland Hospital where he was pronounced dead at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. You want a drink? You heard? Yeah. I was in the back listening to the radio. Murder me? You all right? I've never seen. I've never seen like it. Have mercy. I've never seen nothing like it. Have you said how he's doing? Oh, he's dead. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. He, he, he was smiling. What? He, 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 he was smiling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Brother don't you think you ever go in the back room and lay down for a little while? He, 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 yeah, he, 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 Waiting for the president to drive by. Who heard a shot? Where did the shot come from? I thought it came from behind me, but I'm not sure. I, I couldn't tell. It was, it was so, so much. Slow down, down. Slow down. Slow down. You want another drink? No. Then what happened? President Kennedy reached for his throat. And then another shot. And then his, his head. And then Mrs. Kennedy reached for something and the man shoved it back in the car and then people crying and police running, running everywhere. Well, what did you and Verda May do? We saw people running, so we ran too. Uh, did anybody see you? Well, I don't know. What difference does that make? Well, maybe none. You thinking that Dallas Citizens Council had anything to do with this? No. They're all about business, and this damn show sure ain't good for business. Some rich white men are probably somewhere sitting around scratching their heads. Like everybody else wondering what the hell happened. You okay, Slut? Yeah, I'm alright. You think I ought to tell the law what we saw? Well, for now. Let it be. There's gonna be so much mess over this thing. 
All you'd be is just another gnat in a hailstorm. selling cat whiskey to Slack. Dank and his boy, Raymond, took a tube of in my hand. He don't like being called Raymond. How's that? He don't like being called Raymond. He goes by the name of Cold Law because he says oil and gas don't mix, but Cold Law will always burn. Anyhow, after I got out of the hospital, Reetha and me had a long talk. She told me, you're gonna stop selling cat whiskey. Straighten up, I'm taking Jim and Lee and I'm gonna leave. Reetha is your wife and Jim and Lee is your daughter. Yeah. Reetha started helping me in the business. She does all the paperwork, pays the bills, collects the money. All I got to do is show up and spray cockroaches. <laughs> we even bought a house and moved out of West Dallas. Do you keep it fixed up? Pretty as yard in the neighborhood. <laughs> Whatever happened to that preacher? Moved to Chicago and went back to his wife. I 
about that. Maybe he's preaching up there. I got a letter from him. He said his wife left him. He said, I gave him courage. And he goes on and say, he stood at the crossroads. And he also said, he made a vow before God and man. He said he was going back to his wife. Kind of funny, isn't it? How's that? And I had to strengthen my arms to hold him. All he had to do was follow the leading of his heart. <laughs> How slack? Uh, right after President Kennedy got killed, uh, let me see. That was two years ago. Slack had his first heart attack. I heard about that. Eight months after that, he had a stroke. He just could no longer keep the place up anymore. One good thing came out of it. What's that? Somebody got in touch with his son. You mean the boy he hadn't seen in years? Sure enough, and come to find out, when Slack's wife left him, she moved to Fort Worth. All this time, the boy been living 20 miles away from Slack, and he never knew it. He moved in with him, and he been taking care of him. I'm sorry I missed it. Good seeing you, Red. Since you unemployed now, you already got the warning ads out of that paper. It's all there. Your son driving? Oh yeah. yeah, he's parked out back. I just wanted to come in here and have one last look around. You just misread. He wasn't looking for money, was he? You know how some people are. They hear out I sold this place. They come crawling out the woodwork like a bunch of cockroaches looking for money. He just wanted to see you, that's all. Oh, well, in that case, oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> different branch, but it's all the same roots. <laughs> my, my, my. What's on your mind, brother, man? I figured the only way you was leaving this place would be feet first. Yeah. Brother, man, did I ever tell you uh, the three things that my daddy didn't like? If you did, I forgot. Well, he didn't like nobody messing with his family. He didn't like nobody messing with his money. 
and he didn't like nobody putting their hands on his food. Now that's what my daddy didn't like. What's that got to do with anything? Well, you know, sometimes life can be hard. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning feeling good. Before you know it, something comes along and knocks you down. The next morning, you wake up feeling like your cup is running over. By the end of the day, you stumble and fall. <laughs> so, what do you do? Well, it's like I told Rev once before. If you learn how to stand, you can always keep your balance. You learn to love a good fight. You don't blame others for what you're going through. And most of all, you don't rumble and complain. Mm -hmm. Kind of all is joy. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> so, uh, what are you playing, brother man? Thinking about taking a trip. Where to? Chicago. Dallas to Chicago. That's a long way. It ain't that far. What you planning on doing? Well, me and my boy, we are headed downtown to get us something to eat. We're gonna sit down at the lunch counter and order us a hamburger. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. The paper says that President Johnson is signing the Voting Rights Act today. Hmm. Yeah, but they still ain't fixed them potholes on Singleton Boulevard. Still full of dirty brown water. Damn potholes. I wouldn't concern myself much. It ain't nothing but light on dog water. Yes, sir. Ain't nothing but light on dog.